This show has been sponsored by Sijara News Guys. Hi, so ladies and gentlemen, I'm down here with James Beard. Um, this man is a current footballer playing for Iceland. He's also played for teams like Stenhouse Muir, um, Tobago United. James, so tell the people about your connection to Trinidad, first of all. Well, I came down here in 2007 to play an international match uh, in Tobago. and. Um, to be honest, just fell in love with the country and um, every time I had time out of my career I would always come back every year So, um, and then obviously went on to meet my wife here as well so uh, it holds a lot for me um, in Tobago and obviously in Trinidad too. So who was that inter international match again? Well it was a national game against the Trinidad and Tobago national team. Um, I came down as I say with a British team and um, then I got asked to stay in Tobago actually after the game and I decided I was playing in England at the time, why not stay in the Caribbean? I stayed there for about eight months and um, the rest is kind of history, so yeah. Well, I can understand you falling in love with Tobago because Tobago is like our paradise, our jewel in the Caribbean, really is nice. Definitely, no. I mean, to me, Tobago is as close to paradise, I think, as we will see. So uh, beautiful. I mean, in Trinidad, it's a little bit more um, fast paced than Tobago, so you kind of get the best of both with Trinidad and Tobago, so yeah. So um, I, up till now, I had never heard of um, the West Indies national team, but James, as I know, is um, strongly affiliated with that in some way. Can you tell the people? Well, that one came about about four years ago when I was approached by the non-FIFA um, organisation, which is the NF board, to have a West Indies team. Um, didn't know much about it at the time, but the more they told me about it, I saw it was a great opportunity, and especially with the, the way cricket is done West Indies-wise. So I put together a team, I put together programmes in various countries. We have one in England, one in Suriname, uh, one here, and we basically picked the best players from it. But we made sure that it was players that had never got a chance professionally before. So we were trying to give guys that maybe missed the, the boat, in a sense, the opportunity to play for the West Indies. So, right. so yeah. And how is that going now? Well, at the moment, I kind of did put it on hold because of my own career. So at the moment, we did have a, a development team that regularly trained every day um, up to about two years ago. But because of, as I say, going away, it's very hard to get people that you can leave and trust, you know, with a project. So I wasn't able to get him at the time. Um, so I put it on hold, but it's definitely still there at any point to resurrect when, um, when the time comes. OK. So... Uh, staying off the World Cup for the time being, but um, just going to, uh, like, what do you think can improve it with Trinidadian football? Well, Trinidad, there's no doubt about it that it has wonderful talent. I mean, there's been so many over the years, and even now there's so many young guys have a lot of talent. The discipline side of things definitely is lacking and the infrastructure side of things. So I think um, over the years, because of, I think, the affiliation with Intercall football to professional, there is a huge gap. So, for example, guys will come out, they will do well in Intercall and they'll expect to be able to step up to the pro game. And it's not just as easy as that. And that, and also because of the, the stardom side of things at Intercall, the young guys feel that they are, you know, they're the stars of the school, but then they just can't make it at that pro level. So that is one um, aspect of it. As I say, the other is the discipline thing. And I think as well, behind the scenes, there's not enough people that... Um, maybe have the knowledge or the expertise behind the scenes as well. But I think it is, people are trying, but it all comes down to proper coaching, proper education systems for, as I say, for football on and off the field. And I mean, I, I'm not a footballer, you're a professional footballer, but um, I can only imagine with anything in life, the one piece of advice that you'd give to any up and coming um, footballer is the amount of work that you have to put in. And when you think you've put in enough, you've still got to put more, you know? It's that dedication. And I suppose it's kind of hard being in like a party island as well, finding that balance. Yeah, definitely. I mean, obviously Trinidad, because of carnival and things, there is obviously that aspect of it. But I think a lot of people think that being a footballer is just um, the glam side of things. Girls, cars, money, all those things. And really, unless you're the, probably the top 1%, you're not. They don't, some people don't realise that you have to train four times a day. You're in the gym every day. You're having to look at your diet. So it's a whole branch of things. And then, obviously, you have to have like somebody guiding your career in terms of an agent, maybe, or somebody behind the scenes too. So there's so many aspects of the game that are not just football, necessarily. And I think that's something that 
with proper education the young ones would understand because people as a youngster would say well I want to be a footballer but they don't see like you say the hard work and all of that kind of thing that goes into it and, it, and it, you do end up missing out on a lot of parts of your life because you have to dedicate yourself to the sport. Yeah, but th there are so many rewards if you do keep up that hard work. James, I just want to ask you, now earlier on you were saying that um, you, you, you work with some Trinidadians over here and I heard that you send them across to England? Yeah, well I had, um, I'm thinking 2011, I had a team which is called Highlanders from the, the Central Zone and we had a very good team, very capable bunch of young guys and we sent two guys back then over to England, um, Keston Raphael and um, Ozzy, which is Aswell Alaves. both of them went to England. They both did pretty well um, and we have a, another two actually going over. One of them went already this week, um, a goalkeeper and Keston will go back again. So there's been various opportunities. I have another guy who went to Germany as well via England, um, Brendan. He went through more of the, um, the coaching side of things but he went and played as well. So. When I, when I can, I've tried to help um, the Trinidadian young players as much as possible, yeah. So, what would your advice be to like, if someone's watching this and they think they have the football skills to play abroad and they want to get in touch with you, one, how can they get in touch with you and two, what do you advise them to, to do when they do get in touch with you? Do they need some kind of like video footage to send you or what? Well, something very important I always tell people, a CV is one of the most important things. So you need to get a CV, you need to be playing as much as possible. Sometimes I've seen in Trinidad guys will come and they will say, I'm a good player. But when I ask them who they're playing for, they're not playing for MD. That's very important. You need to be playing. You're only as good as your last game and you need to be training all the time. If they want to get in contact with me, I have obviously all the social media things, my name, James Baird, or the West Indies FA um, platforms. But it's very important to be pushing yourself to the highest level you can. But when you get opportunities, keep things simple. Scouts will not come and pick the guy who's a showboater in any team. They will come and pick the guy who can pass, he can tackle, he can head, he can shoot. The simple things of the game, not the actual glamorous side of the game. So generally that's one thing I would tell the youngsters. And I think um, as a Trinidad, they, they have a lot of that talent, but they just have to home it into the right um, thing. But a CV is very, very important. Right. Hi James! So, final result 4-2. How do you feel about that? I think the ultimate score was probably um, is, is the right score. France were probably the best team in terms of the whole tournament. They had the pace, they had the, um, the panache, the, the, the stars, and Mbappé was amazing. Um, Croatia, they did well, they did exceptional to get here, but at the end of the day, they just lacked maybe some spark in the final. So, at the end of the day, it was a good result, but um, I'm sad for Croatia, but I'm very happy for France. Yeah. Well done, France. World Cup winners, congratulations. What do you think about that penalty though? Again, I don't think it was a penalty at the end of the day, but at the end of the day, the referee has the, the VAR technology, he has the help with the guys in the office, so they decided it was a penalty, but still for me it wasn't a penalty. Do you think it changed the game? I think it changed the game immensely. I think if it wasn't for that penalty, Croatia probably would have came back, but I knocked the stuff out of them, and at the end of the day, they lost the game, so that's football. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you. And that's James Beard, that's B A I R. B A I R D, yes. Okay, so remember, check this guy out on Facebook, on um, on Instagram? On Instagram as well, but Instagram is the West Indies FA, that's the, the Instagram page. But as they, everybody gets me on Facebook so they can get me there, and um, I'm always here as well, so if you can't find me there, well, you can find me at Smoking Bunnies. So. Right, Smoking Bunnies. <laughs>